Hi, I'm Brian Preer, tutoring high school chemistry, and today's topic is organic chemistry, and in particular, functional side groups. Functional side groups are the things that you can attach to a carbon chain other than hydrogen. This is a list of all the functional side groups that you'll need for high school chemistry, but it's a very long list, so we're only going to cover the first five in this lesson and finish up in a later lesson. Alright, so here we have a lovely pentane molecule, five carbons and hydrogens all around. Now we're going to start plugging in some functional side groups. First up is the alkyl group. The alkyl group is any chain of carbons attached to your main chain. So let me put one on the pentane right now. We're going to attach a two carbon chain right here. Now, there are two ways you can tell when an alkyl group is an alkyl group. It is not attached to your main chain. That means that it is not attached to either of these end carbons. If I'd attach these two C's here, then it would just be a continuation of the chain for seven carbons total, creating heptane. Next is that you know that it's got fewer carbons. Pentane has five carbons. This alkyl group has only two. Two is less than five, therefore this is your alkyl group. To name your alkyl group, use a Greek prefix based on number of carbons. There are two carbons in this one, so eth, then add yl to the end of that, so ethyl. Put that in front of your main chain's name, calling this ethyl pentane. Now, there's one more thing. I've put a check here in the use number column. Basically, that means you need to number your carbons to indicate where your alkyl group is located. So there are two ways to do this. You start at the end of the chain and work the other way. This chain is too wet. So you could either number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or the other way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The point of this is to, well, tell where this is, but you also need to keep the number as low as possible. So instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, and saying this is on the fourth carbon, you call it 2 since 2 is less than 4. So this is going to be called 2-ethylpentane. Alright, so let's move on. Next up is the alcohol. The alcohol is just an OH group attached somewhere in this chain. Now, that, notice this odd notation, ROH. The R just represents any carbon chain you can think of, like pentane. So let's put one in. I've attached an OH group over here. So now we need to change the ending. Just add OL. So instead of pentane, we're going to call this pentanol. And again, use number to indicate where it is. So either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1 is smaller than 5, so this is going to be 1 pentanol. Okay, next up is the halide. The halide is similar, and actually quite simple. All, it's just a halogen attached somewhere in here. Remember, halogens are groups seven on the periodic table. So let's put in a chlorine. To name a halide, simply take part of the halogen name and attach it to your main chain's name. So since we've got a chlorine, we're going to call this chloropentane. And again, use a number to indicate what carbon it's on. So 2 is your smallest one, so this is going to be 2 chloropentane. Alright, next up is the aldehyde. Aldehyde is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to a hydrogen. These are always going to occur at the end of your chain. So let me just put one in right now. When adding on functional side groups, you need to make sure that the total number of bonds any carbon has is 4. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's too many. So we're going to get rid of two hydrogens. When getting rid of hydrogens, make sure that they're not coming out of your functional side group. Otherwise, it's not going to be the functional side group anymore. So right now we have 1, 2, 3, 4 bonds. Everything's good. Now we just need to change the ending. So instead of pentane, we're going to call that pentanal. You do not need to use a number to indicate where it is because it will always be on the end. All right, last up is the ketone. But first, let's change this back to pentane. The ketone is just a double bonded oxygen somewhere in your molecule. Now I've used R1 and R2 as subscripts. These basically just mean parts of the carbon chain. So let's double bond an oxygen right here in the middle. Again, make sure you've got four bonds total. This is one, two, three, four, five, so we need to get rid of a hydrogen. And there it goes. All right, so one, two, three, four. Now we need to change the ending to O, so instead of pentane, we're going to call this compound pentone. And we're going to use a number to show where that ketone is. Either way, for this molecule, it's going to be three, so we're going to call this three pentone. And that's all the side groups we're going to be covering for in this lesson. Alright, to recap, 
The alkyl group is any chain of carbons that is attached to the main chain. That means that it is not on any of the end carbons, because that would be a continuation of the chain, and also that it has fewer carbons than the main chain itself. Take the Greek prefix based on number of carbons and end with YL. Use a number to indicate where that alkyl group is attached. In numbering your carbons, remember, start at the end of the chain and then number 1 and so forth to get the lowest number to indicate where your group is. Next up is the alcohol group. <coughs> remember, R just stands in for any carbon chain you can think of. And in OL, and use a number to indicate where the OH group is. Halides are just when a halogen is attached somewhere in the chain. Use part of the halogen name and a number to indicate where the halogen is. Aldehydes always occur on the end. C double bonded to O, single bond to H, and an AL. Ketone is just double bonded to an oxygen somewhere in there. Add ONE to the end, and use a number to indicate where it is. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Bryant Freer. See you next time.